Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me. I'm Mike Drodis, Bible teacher and preacher, and you are watching my YouTube channel, Solving the Prophetic Puzzle. There is an event that's coming in the future, in the near future, that will affect the entire world. Every individual will be affected. Some will be blessed, and some will be left dazed and confused. There is a day. It will begin like any other day. We will wake up. We will have breakfast. We will go to work. We will go to school. We will, we will be performing business as usual. But suddenly, millions of people will vanish. Of course, I'm talking about the rapture. It's on God's timetable. It's something that's going to happen. And it's something that all of us, if we're here, will see and witness and experience. But those of us who are here, when the rapture occurs, will actually be a very small percentage of the entire group of believers that's going to be raptured. Let me explain what I mean. Turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, our great rapture verse. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, looking in verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who are asleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. There is a group that goes first. We, as we read here in the Bible, we see that the Lord himself descends from heaven. He doesn't come all the way to the earth. He descends from heaven. And there's a shout. And there's a voice of an archangel. And there's a trumpet of God. And then the dead in Christ rise first or go first. This is the first wave. The dead in Christ go first. Now, what do I mean when, when we talk about the, the term dead in Christ? Um. The, the body of Christ, the church, has been on this earth now for about 2,000 years. It began on the day of Pentecost. After Jesus died, um, all the believers were gathered together in one room, and the Holy Ghost came and filled these believers, and the church age began, and, and people began to, to come to Christ. Uh, in fact, the very first day that Peter preached, 3,000 people came to Christ, and they were, they, they were born again. They became new creations in Christ Jesus. They, they were saved. And this has been going on for year after year worldwide for, for 2,000 years. And, 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 and most of these believers have, have, gone, have passed away. Their bodies have been buried. Their spirits, of course, are with the Lord. But they, these are what is referred to as the dead in Christ. Now let me assure you that when a believer dies... His spirit is with the Lord in heaven. Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. There is no such thing as soul sleep. There is no such thing as purgatory. When your spirit leaves your body, your spirit goes to be with the Lord. You see, you are a spirit. You live in a body and you have a soul. In order to function on this earth, you need a body. And so the body is like your earth suit. You are a spirit. You are a spirit man. And when you are born again, it's the spirit that's made new instantly. Jesus is coming back to the earth at the time at the end of the tribulation. And he's coming back for to set up a, a kingdom for a thousand years where he will rule and reign on this earth. You need a body to be with Jesus Christ because he's going to be on the earth. He's going to be ruling and reigning. And we as believers will be ruling and reigning as well. So the dead in Christ get a resurrected body at the rapture. Very similar to Jesus' resurrected body. When Jesus died, he was buried in a tomb. And three days later, he rose up from, 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 the, from the grave and he had a resurrected body. He told Thomas, look, touch, see Look at the nail prints in my hands. Flesh and bone. He was flesh and bone. In fact, the dead in Christ will, will, will have a similar body to the resurrection body of Jesus. The dead in Christ 
will be reunited with their former body at the rapture. You may be saying, how could this be? How could this be? It's dust. It could be blown up. It could have been burnt up. The molecules could have been scattered all over the world. Body parts could be everywhere. Oh, I've taught about this before if, if you watched other videos. In every believer, there is a genetic marker that is lying dormant like a seed. It happens at the new birth. Remember that, Pete, uh, that, that Paul said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. That term new creation means new species, as though it never existed before. So when a, a person is born again, when a person... Um, believes that Jesus Christ is, is the way, the truth, and the life. When a person allows Jesus Christ to be Lord over his life and, and, and confesses Jesus Christ as Lord, he is born again. He is a new creation. Now you may say, well, what's new? My body still looks the same. That's right. It's not your body that becomes new because you're not your body. You live in your body. And it's not your mind that becomes new. Although the mind is renewed by reading the Bible, the washing and regeneration of the Word of God, um, your mind will be renewed. But instantly, your spirit is changed. You become a new creation in Christ Jesus. And it is at the new birth that, that as Peter says, the incorruptible seed is placed inside of every believer. I call that a genetic marker, but Peter calls it the incorruptible seed, and it is implanted in us at the new birth. Now let's go back to 1 Thessalonians once again. Verse 15, For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. Now you understand when he says asleep, it means those who have died in Christ. Their bodies are in the ground, but their spirits are with the Lord in heaven, and the Lord brings them back with him. Verse 16, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. The dead in Christ will rise first. I believe that when that last trumpet of God is sounded, when that trumpet of God sounds, there's a cascading event that begins to occur. Genetically, every atom of every believer that has died and has been buried or burned or lost at sea begins to reassemble. Oh yeah, it reformats. It reformats. Bones begin to connect. Skin begins to grow. Tissue is developed, and, and this, this body is being reformatted and, and, and made new. And you may say, oh, Brother Mike, you're crazy. That could never happen. In your spare time, read Ezekiel chapter 37, the valley of the dry bones, and you can see that it did happen before, but this will be on a massive scale. This, this, the, the, the body of, of believers that have died long ago will be resurrected. There'll be a resurrected body. It will be even better before, than before. If you have loved ones that have died, there's no need to sorrow. If they are believers in Christ, when the, when the, the day of the rapture occurs and this trumpet sounds, their bodies will be reformatted. There, and, and they will be, become a resurrected body. And it will be better than their old body. Then in an instant, this newly resurrected body will then be raptured. And it will be, and, and the spirit will now be reunited with their former body, now in a resurrected body. That's why it says that Jesus will, that will bring back those who have, who, have, who, have, who have died, who have, who have fallen asleep. He will bring them back. Then we who remain... Those who are here on the earth who remain, who aren't dead, but they are here at the rapture event. Those who remain, they will be changed in a fraction of a sec, sec, second. They will be changed. Their bodies will be changed. This corruptible body is, is, is um, winding down and it's falling apart. But we will be changed in an instant and we will have an incorruptible body. And then we will be caught up. I always like to believe 
that I will be here when the rapture. So I always say we. Then our bodies will be changed in an instant. And this corruptible body will put on incorruption. And then we will, we will be raptured out of here. And we will meet the Lord in the air. Thus, hundreds of millions of people that are alive on the earth at the time of the rapture will go. And they will be reunited with, with the hundreds of millions, possibly billions of dead in Christ that have gone on before um, we will all be reunited with the Lord in the air. This will happen. We are seeing the signs of the end of the age now. We are seeing prophecy happen right in the, right before our eyes. Day after day, we are drawing closer and closer to the rapture, the, the catching away. Now is the time to get right with Jesus. Now is the time to, to call upon the Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Be ready for the rapture. Be looking for the rapture. And in the event, if you pass away before the rapture, do not sorrow. You actually go first in this great rapture event. Wave one is the dead in Christ. Wave two are those who still are, who, who remain alive. But we will all be changed. We all get a resurrected body. We all will be with the Lord in the air. And then, as Jude said, in the last days, in the last of the last days, on the last day of the tribulation, Jesus Christ comes back with thousands upon thousands or myriads upon myriads. And that's us. We come back with Jesus to rule and reign with Christ during the millennial millennial reign. So thanks for watching. If you haven't liked or subscribed yet, please do so. Every week I, I have a message about the end times or about the rapture or, or, or something that the Lord leads on my heart. I appreciate all your comments. I appreciate all your likes. I appreciate uh, every one of you and pray as often for you as I can. And, and so until next time, keep watching and I'll see you here on Solving the Prophetic Puzzle. God bless you.